Thank you for tuning in to Faith Connection, where we help you connect to God. Baptist Church. As many of you may know, I was raised in a Christian home where my parents took me to church faithfully. Anytime the doors were open, we were there. We were there Sunday morning, night, Wednesday night, and any other time we were subconsciously breathing. So I just want to go ahead and take this moment to thank my parents for raising me the right way and teaching me the most important values in life, which is uh, putting God first and everything else will fall into place. So thank you, Mom and Dad. At the age of seven, I asked God to save my soul, what I thought at the time was being saved. My friend Clint I went to church with had recently gotten saved, so I thought, well, if he got saved, then I should probably think about doing the same, right? Everyone was congratulating him, telling him how happy they were for the decision he had made. In my head, the pressure was on, and I knew from a church standpoint that trusting Christ as your Savior was the right thing to do, the hip thing to do, so to speak. The next Sunday rolled around, and I did it. I trusted Christ into my heart. I didn't fully understand at the time, but I did it for all the wrong reasons. I did it for my friend, my parents, my peers, and every other reason except the right one. People say when you get saved, sometimes you're emotional and you feel a huge sigh of relief. I felt all of those things, so I must have gotten saved, right? Problem was, the only reason I felt those things was the relief of pressure I'd put on myself, thinking that it would make my parents and my pastor happy. Everyone congratulated me too, so naturally that made me happy. I found out later that I truly missed out on the true meaning of salvation. To make a long story short, time went on and I drifted as far into space away from God as possible. I eventually got to the point to where I completely was out of church for a long time. I wasn't physically out of church, but mentally, so much so that I might as well have been a million miles away. A lot of things in my life weren't going quite the way I wanted them to. I was having multiple problems that made me lose faith and my heart grew cold. I was bitter at God almost to the point of unbelief. A certain individual that entered into my life at the time sparked new hope that God was real and that he was indeed listening. When I met this person, they weren't exactly the model Christian either, actually quite the opposite. That was precisely what I was looking for. I didn't want church friends. I didn't want anything even remotely 
felt or looks like the array of such thing. To my surprise, this person completely refined their life distinctively. A transformation was safe to say a miracle. Not only did this person get in church with passionate fire for God, but also made an impact on their entire family, resulting in a couple of salvations. With all that being said, this played a huge role in preparing my heart for what God had in store. It gave me faith that I didn't have. I began to doubt my salvation because I felt no remorse for the things that I did wrong. My parents weren't, my prayers weren't getting answered and my problems only got worse. On the other hand, why would God grant my request when I wasn't living for Him and only for myself and only coming to Him when I wanted something? I started to cry out to God, pleading for Him to reveal His existence if He were truly there. I prayed for six or seven months with no signs of anything. I was coming to the conclusion that maybe He didn't exist and it was all just a fairy tale. It was only soon after something dramatic happened that would change the endeavor of my life for eternity. So I was living life the way I wanted to, doing my own thing, uh, hanging out with the wrong friends, uh, whatever, but I felt happy. So I thought, you know, you know, maybe this is the right path for me to take. You know, going to church and doing my own thing, it was okay as long as I was going to church. It made me a good person, I thought. But so at the time, my life, my life, seemed, my life seemed great. And then um, out of nowhere, I was uh, laying in my, my bedroom one night watching TV and uh, my heart started racing extremely fast. Um, I had no stress or, or whatsoever in my, in my mind or, or anything. Nothing was going on that was stressing me out, but for some reason I had a really, really bad anxiety attack to the point to where I thought I was going to have to call the ambulance. I got really dizzy, thought I was having a heart attack, thought I was about to pass out. It soon went away after about 10, 15 minutes, so I, I calmed down, uh, went to sleep, and you know thought I could wake up and uh, everything would be fine and it would be over. But from then on, um, my anxiety got really bad. And just from day on, from each day um, forward, for the next like month or so, my anxiety was really bad and um, I got really depressed about it and I thought I was going to have to live the rest of my life with um, all this uh, anxious, all these anxious feelings. So I tried to resolve the problem. My mom took me to um, a health herb store to give me some herbs to help with anxiety. And I walked in, uh, I was looking, just looking on the shelves to see what would help with anxiety and there was a guy that came in, um, didn't know the guy, uh, I'd never seen him before in my entire life, and he came up to me and he said, are you having problems with anxiety? And it just hit me like, this is crazy because I'd never met this guy before in my life, he had never met me, he didn't know what I was in there for, but he seemed to know that I was having problems with anxiety, and I said, yeah, actually. And he said, uh, before I ask you anything else, he said, have you ever been saved? And I said, I said, wow, I was like, in my mind, I was like, no, I don't, I don't know. I'm just not sure about it. But I told him, yes, I was in front of my mom, so I didn't want to say no. He asked me if I was saved, and I said, yes, of course I've been saved. And um, from then on, it just, God grabbed my heart and twisted it into a million knots. So he, he said, can I pray with you? And I said, sure. And there were multiple people in there, about 10, 10 or 15 or so people in the store at the time. And uh, surprisingly, he, he prayed for me out loud in the store with um, customers and everything, even the lady who owned the store bowed her head and there were people in there from, um, just 10 or 15 people in there all bowed their head too and they prayed with me and he put his arm around me and um, I just you know cried out to God because I was, I was just really heartbroken for, for the fact that uh, I had really bad anxiety and I just didn't know how to um, take it because I'd never experienced it before. And it was like, wow, because I'd been praying for six or seven months for God to reveal himself to me. Um, I, I prayed, you know, if God, if you're truly there, if you truly exist, send someone specific to me that, that would tell me about you. I didn't, I didn't want um, to go to church and hear, you know, the preacher or the pastor or whatever say, uh, give the invitation and um, explain the plan of salvation because I'd heard that before my entire life. So it was nothing specific. So I prayed for six or seven months, like I said, for God to send me someone specific. And um, he sent me uh, this guy, and his name is uh, Matt Pritchett. And it, it just hit me like, wow, this is crazy. And um, so the next week rolled around. Uh, I went to church that Sunday, and I sat in the back, sat in the back row. Uh, Pastor Charles was preaching a message about someone being sent to you specifically. Um, he told a story about a guy who had prayed the same thing for God to send someone specifically to him if he truly existed. God sent him someone, and they accepted Christ as a savior, and um, so I, that really hit that really hit home to me. And I went up to the altar, and I got saved. 
and um, my life's been different ever since. Amen. <laughs> Wonderful testimony, amen. amen. And um, I'm proud of the decision that Seth made. Um, I'm proud that uh, God has brought peace into his life, amen. One of the things that we all need is peace. Uh, we can't live with turmoil continually. We need a, a place of peace, amen. Um, we need to find a place and. Uh, I want you to know today there is a way of peace. Matter of fact, this passage I'm going to read to you talks about John the Baptist. And um, John the Baptist was sent uh, to be a witness of Jesus. And in verse number 76, uh, the scriptures tell us <clears throat> that, um, And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest. For thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people. By the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God. Whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us. To give light to them that sit in darkness. And in the shadow of death. To guide our feet into the way of peace. God in that day sent a specific person. John the Baptist. To guide us into the way of truth. <clears throat> My wife and I. We're visiting a lady. She's actually in our congregation today. And, and um, as we had spoken to her about salvation, she was a little hesitant because I think she was looking for God to do something special as a sign or something. I'm not exactly sure. I don't want to put words in her mouth. But I remember my wife and I both saying to her, we believe that God has brought us by your way so that you could trust Jesus today. And she did. I remember my wife was, uh, was, uh, was out visiting. Actually, she had met a lady. Uh, and um, <clears throat> uh, the, in the conversation with this lady, she found out the lady w was having a lot of anxiety. And um, she was really worried about some things. And, and in the course of it all, she was worried about her eternity. And uh, my wife got burdened by that, began praying about this lady. And, and there was a lady that, uh, that used to visit with my wife a lot. And, and uh, she would go check on people and also go encourage people in the Lord and um and she began to tell this lady I, I want to go visit this woman and uh, so her friend out there began to pray about that and they were looking for an opportunity and it's amazing that uh, on just a day when the woman had been visited by some other individuals who'd given her some false information about eternity and she was really burdened about it and she was raised in a religious background but she also was being confused by other false doctrine and she was really and she had prayed on a day God, if, you, if you're there, send me somebody <laughs> to tell me about you. And that was that day that my wife and her friend knocked on the lady's door. And um, when she opened the door, she said, you're an answer to my prayer. And uh, they got to lead her to Christ. Amen. You know, I believe that you're here for a particular reason. I don't believe it's by accident. I don't believe it's by chance. Uh, and it may be that somebody's not even sitting in this room that'll watch this program on on television or on a on a video recast or something like that. Uh, that that uh, you think, well, isn't this a funny thing that I just happen to? You know, I don't believe in a lot of circumstances with God and happenstances. I believe God has divine appointments. Amen. Amen? Uh, and I believe that you're here today because God wants you to have this message. I believe that this is the message that God wants me to deliver. I can't say with divine perfection that I'm exactly going to be right. I, I don't have that assurance, but I do believe that I'm going to give you a message that is from the Word of God, and it's for you today if you'll receive it. Because there's nothing in the world like peace. Peace of mind, peace in your heart, peace with your family, peace in our world. There's nothing in this world like having peace. Amen. On the other hand, there's nothing worse... <laughs> Than war. Uh, when, our, when our world's at war, it's a horrible thing. And to watch war and to watch what it does to people. But it's not just the physical war that's so tragic. It's the internal wars that we fight. There's nothing worse than to, for a husband and wife to be at war with each other. Nothing worse than for a parent and their child to be at war with each other. Nothing worse than their church to be at, at war with each other. What we need is peace. Amen? I, uh... <laughs> Think about that. Um, 
think about uh, a fellow was telling me a story the other day and he said that um, him and his wife years ago had pulled into an old timey gas station. Remember, I don't know if there's still any guy around. You know where they actually have an attendant to pump your gas? Anybody, anybody ever been to one of those? Yeah, they still got them? No, I, I haven't seen one, but maybe they do. Anyway, they pulled in this station and um, the guy come over to the, the driver's side window and said, how are you doing? And the man's wife blurted out, what did he say, dear? And he said, honey, he said, how are we doing? She looked at him and said, we're doing okay. And then he said, um, can I help you? She said, what did he say? He said, you want to know if he, how we're, if he can help us? And she said, yeah, you can help us. That's why we're here. He said, well, would you like some gas? He, she said, what did he say? And he looked over at his wife and said, he wants to know if we want some gas. Yes, we want some gas. That's why we're here. And she, he said, well, what kind of gas would you like? And she said, what did he say? And she said, he said to his wife, said, he wants to know what kind of gas. And we want to fill it up with regular. And he said, well, where are you guys from? And the man said, uh, he was about to tell them where they're from. And, and, and uh, the, the woman started to blow it out. And he finally got a word in. And uh, he said, he wants to know where we're from. <laughs> and she said, well, we're from Arkansas. And the guy says, um, well, I knew a, a lady from Arkansas one time. Boy, she was an ornery old thing. A man was she hard to get along with. I'll tell you what. I, and the woman said, what did he say? And the husband said, he thinks he knows you. <laughs> anyway, nothing like peace in the home, you know. And... Um, <laughs> Uh, I heard about the, uh, the deputy pulled over a pickup truck going down the road and pulled the driver over and the driver come up to, to the driver's window there and the driver rolled his window down and said, what's wrong, officer? I do something wrong? He said, well, sir, I don't know if you realize this, but about a, about a mile back up the road there said, your wife just fell out of the truck. <laughs> and uh, he said, oh, man, thank you for letting me know that. He said, I thought for sure I was going deaf. Well, last week it was blondes, this week it's wives, and I'm in trouble. So anybody want to take me out to dinner today? Um, but uh, I want to say it's one of, after 30, almost 33 years, it's wonderful to have, a, 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 have peace at home. I enjoy that so much. And I know you do. And I know um, our children are in their mid-20s now. and One's married, one's engaged to be married. And I'm so happy that we have peace with our children. Uh, there have been times when... Uh, the marriage wasn't always at peace. There's been times when our, our parent relationship wasn't always at peace. And I'm so glad that we have a church that enjoys peace. But there have been times when there have been conflicts, uh, uh, minor things here and there. And I, just, I know that uh, there's nothing more important than this matter of peace. And, uh, and one of the things that John the Baptist was to do was declare Jesus. And the, and the Bible says that he was going to declare the way of peace. We live in a time when there is quite an absence of peace in this world. Uh, they tell me statistically that there are more wars going on now than have ever been at any one given time. Wars all over the place. Wars we don't even hear about. I know that we've seen major wars and probably more, more wars on a larger scale. But uh, the, number, the number of wars and small conflicts over this planet are, are enormous. And uh, all the terrorism that goes on. Uh, you know, uh, I think there's a lot of... Uh, there was a lot of, I don't know if the word disillusionment is right, but I think that our country felt like when we elected, uh, you know, a black African-American president, that we would, we would end a lot of the racial problems. And it seems like we continue to have more and more instead of less and less. You know, um, all you got to do is just drive on 400 a little bit and you'll find out that there's no peace on the highway. Amen. And in our homes... Uh, uh, I, 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 my, my counseling load gets greater. I don't complain about that. Uh, the, the, one of the joys of my life is to help people. But I believe the devil is fighting over time to try to, to, try to take away peace from the home. I, I believe he's fighting over time to try to hurt that. And um, I, I see churches uh, that, are, that are struggling with it. Um, and yet there's nothing more important than peace, but we have an absence of it. We see because of that people have anxiety, there's conflicts. There's turmoil in people's lives. 
And today I would like to tell you with, a, with full assurance, I'm just as confident of this as I am anything, that there is a way of peace. I've been looking for her. There she is. There is a, I was, she's usually sitting right out here, and I can't, I was, I was trying to get a grin in my jokes, but. <laughs> anyway, um, I was talking about peace. All right. Well, there is a way for peace. And I want to I share some things with you today from the Word of God. Uh, there is a way to have peace with people and peace with self and peace with God. And I want you to understand something. That you will not have peace with other people if you're not at peace with yourself. A lot of the problems you have with other people are just problems you have with yourself. And you're not going to have peace with yourself until you have peace with God. And it follows that process. So many times if um, I see marital problems, I find out that a lot of it is the problem that people have with themselves. And they won't have peace with each other until they get peace with themselves. And many times the problem they've got in their own internal struggles is a problem that can only be fixed by God or that God can fix and God can work out. And so I want to show you there is a, a way. Uh, there is a good life that involves peace. We get to talk about several other things in the course of this study. And um, I'm excited about that. Uh, but today, one of the aspects I think that will lead you to the good life that you want is to enjoy peace. I heard about two boys that were fighting. And the teacher snatched them up and took them to the principal's office. And the principal said, all right, what's going on, boys? <laughs> and the one boy says, well, it all started when he hit me back. <laughs> and that's the way it tends to be sometimes. We, we can't see where it originates. It always starts with somebody else. But today, you can have peace in your life. And in the midst of troubles... Just like uh, those Hebrew boys that were thrown into that burning, fiery furnace. They had peace because they said, if God will deliver us, then we'll be delivered. When Daniel was thrown in that lion's den, he had peace. Now, Jonah didn't have any peace when he went in the belly of the whale. You know why? Because he wasn't right with God. Uh, and it doesn't matter your circumstances. Uh, affluence and poverty, uh, you can see some of the poorest people on the planet that have peace in their life. And you can see some of the richest people on the planet that have no peace in their life. So you can't say, if I had more money, I'd have more peace. You can't say that uh, I've seen people who had all good health, and some people that seem like their health, well, they, they, they got a dud for a body. I don't mean that derogatorily, but I'm just telling you, peace is not something that comes from without, it comes from within. And it all starts with God. It all starts with God. I believe if, um, if our country would wholeheartedly follow God, that we'd have peace like we've never had. When the children of Israel... We're following God like they should follow Him. God brought peace into their life. And there was a time during the reign of Solomon, from David to Solomon, uh, in which uh, the nation of Israel lived at peace, and there were happy people. Uh, the queen of Sheba came and began to survey, and said, I've heard about Solomon, and I've heard about these people, and I've heard about this kingdom. But she said, the half has not been told. You have a happy people. You have a blessed kingdom. She began to describe all the good things about Israel. But it didn't take long before they walked away from God that they had no peace. And they spent... Uh, Lots and lots of years without any peace in their land. And there won't be any, pre any real peace until they turn to the Prince of Peace. It all begins with God. And I don't know where you're at in your life today. I hope that you're enjoying peace. But I know this, it all starts with God. You know what Jesus is referred to as? I just mentioned it. The Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ is referred to as the Prince of Peace. Isn't that amazing? That's the title for Him. The Prince of Peace. Uh, of course, the devil would be the, uh, the antithesis of that. He would be the, uh, the prince and power of the air which is, uh, in which he brings conflict. He'd come to kill, to steal, to destroy, to maim. He didn't come to bring peace. He comes to bring problems. And uh, he does that very well. But you know, Jesus gives us his peace. In John chapter 14 and verse 27, he said this to us. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He made a promise. He said, I will give you my peace. I, I'll give you a special peace that uh, comes from me and works in you and ultimately will work through you. And God wants us to enjoy that kind of peace in our life to where you can lay your head on your pillow at night and not feel guilt 
or fear or anxiety. But you know that you're in the hand of a loving God. Now, I know this. I, when I say this, I look around this room and I can begin. I can look in every section and I can look uh, from row to row. And I know uh, enough about your lives that I, I pray for you. And you're on my prayer list. And I keep a long prayer list. And uh, I, I know that from physical to financial to marital uh, to, uh, to children, uh, you've got burdens that you carry and things that would destroy uh, the natural peace that you'd like to have. We'd like to have this natural equilibrium where everything just works out fine and we don't have to worry about anything. But the Bible says in this world you will have trouble. I like what one person said. I believe it might have been John Maxwell. I was reading one of his books and he made a statement that, um, you know, uh, that life is about 10% uh, of what happens outside of you and 90% of what happens inside of you. You can't change your circumstances, but you can change how you react to them. And a lot of it has to do with your relationship with God. Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace. And number two, He gives us His peace. Number three, the Bible said in Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, And the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. There's this peace of God that, that surpasses understanding. When you can't figure it out. You know, there's a times in your life where, you know, you should have totally been scared to death or anxious or worried and yet God gave you that peace. Can I get a witness? In which you just, you know, I think that's the hallmark of a child of God is when we go through the problems that everybody else goes through and yet God has given us a peace to handle it. There's something about us that's a, that's a little different. It's not that it's in, of, in and of ourselves but it's the God who lives in us and it's the peace that comes from Him. Our Savior, when He saved us, He brought with Him the Prince of Peace. He brought the peace of God. And He brought uh, uh, a peace not like the world gives. The world offers you peace, but it's only in, in, its, own, in its security. It's amazing. Uh, when I studied this, I found out that celebrities, you know, didn't ever think they were, they were pretty enough. And uh, millionaires didn't think they were rich enough. And athletes didn't think they were talented enough. And, all, and it goes on and on and on. Well, the kind of peace the world gives you is so temporary. And so fragile. But when God gives you a peace, it's a peace that passes understanding. Amen? It's a peace that will bridge the gap to whatever the world throws at you. It's a, you know, if all we've got is what the world gives us, then we're like a pinball machine being bounced around by the things of life. But when we live in the peace of God, <laughs> nobody can do anything to us that God can is not greater than. Amen? Greater is He that's in us than He that's in the world. And there's a power of God that can work in our life. You know, I, I thought for years, I went to funeral homes, and I went to funeral homes, and I, and, and, and it, and I, I was afraid, what am I going to do when it's my mama or my daddy? And truthfully, I miss them dearly. But I have a peace in my heart. You know what that peace is from? One day I will see them again. It's not. Uh, I don't have to go. I don't, I don't begrudge anybody that goes to a cemetery and spends a long time at a grave marker and, uh, and doing all that. That's fine if that's what you do. I don't need to go to a cemetery because I know where mom and daddy's at. They're not in that ground. Amen. I have a peace about that. You know, uh, there's times in our lives when we send our children off to college or send them off to different places and, and we get real anxious about that. But uh, I remember talking to my wife years ago about this and said, listen, uh, they're God's children and we can trust him with them we have a peace that God's going to take care of things and we can look at this world and say man I don't know what our country's coming to I don't know what the financial matter is going to be I don't know what's on the horizon and yes I believe there's some things that are not pretty on the horizon but guess what I don't know what tomorrow holds but I know who holds tomorrow I know who holds our hand. And uh, uh, Paul said I know whom I have believed and I'm persuaded that he's able to keep that which I've committed unto him against that day Isaiah 26, 3, I love this verse. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. The way of peace begins first by trusting God. By trusting God. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. It's, it's, uh, it's trusting God, and it's keeping our mind focused on God. The sea was raging. Yet Simon Peter had peace about stepping out onto that sea. And it was only after he turned his attention off of the Lord and onto himself that he began to sink. And I want you to know today that our peace is not in our government. 
Our peace is not in our national security. I'm thankful for the military. I'm thankful for the, the, the measures that we have in place. Uh, last night, we were working here late, trying to do a few things to get ready for this morning. And um, one of our deputy sheriffs come through patrolling our area. I'm thankful that we have that kind of patrol. Amen. Uh, they, they look out after us well. and They care about our community. But the truth of the matter is, our peace is well beyond that. Uh, our peace is well beyond uh, uh, the military that we have. Our peace is well beyond the, the doors on our houses the locks that we have our peace is well beyond the insurance i don't know if you've got a if you've got the affordable care or the unaffordable care i don't know i don't know which one you're but i know this that ultimately if we're going to lay our head on our pillow at night it'll come from our god because he's the only one big enough to take care of us but that's what the good life's all about amen to know to know, to know that when you lay your head on your pillow at night, that things are right between you and God. That He's uh, got you. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. He said, uh, uh, we're in the Father's hand, and He's greater than all of us. We ain't got to worry about what can come to us, because God's bigger than any problem that we're ever going to face. Amen? And uh, that's the peace that we have. That's the peace that you can have. You say, preacher, but you don't know what's going on in my life. No, I don't, but I know that God does. And I don't know what, what you're going to have to face tomorrow. But I know this, you won't have to face it alone. And I know that if you walk with God, that He can keep you at peace, even if, the, if everything's falling off, falling, out, falling, falling apart around you, that God can give you a peace that passes understanding, to know that you've done your best, that you're walking with God. Listen, don't quit God. That's what the devil wants you to do. He wants you to walk away from God in your times of trouble. But just walk with God. And stay with God. Hey, listen, if you know the Lord as your Savior, then you have the Prince of Peace in your life. If you'll keep your mind stayed on Him and trust Him, you can have a perfect peace. And you can have a peace that passes all understanding. Why? Because the, the Bible says that, 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 Christ, that God shall keep, He'll guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. There's a way of peace, but it goes by and through the Lord Jesus Christ. Some people say, well, I believe in a higher power. That's, that's not what the Bible teaches. It's more specific than that. He says, through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. Uh, there is only one way that we can come to the Father, and that's through Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, you can, you can join a church, and you can get baptized, and you can take uh, uh, sacraments and communions and all these other things, but that's not the, the source of our peace. You can try to do better and improve your life. But that's not the source of our peace. There's one source of it, and we sang about it. It's about the cross, amen? It's about the blood. It's about the fact that Jesus shed His blood for our sins and to, to pay our sin debts and to, and to establish a relationship with us. I'll share another verse with you. Romans chapter 5, you don't have to turn there, but verse 1. Therefore, being justified by faith. Listen to me now. Being justified by faith. We put our faith in Jesus Christ. He justified. You know what that means? Just as if I'd never sinned. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. We have peace with God. Now, that's where it starts. If you can get peace with God, then you can find peace with yourself. By the way, there's nothing you've done that God won't forgive you for. Amen? There's nothing you've done that God won't forgive you for. And when God forgives you, He gives you a, a second start. He's a God of second chances. The Bible said in Ephesians chapter 2, You who are dead and trespasses in, hath He quickened. You've made alive. Amen. He's brought you, He started you, He gave you a fresh start. The Bible talks about in, Revel in Romans chapter 6, uh, that we wa we're risen to walk in newness of life. God's not holding a cloud over you about the past. And I know you may still have to deal with some of those scars, uh, but there's a God in heaven that's willing to forgive you. And by the way, if you've entrusted Him as your Savior, He's already forgiven you. He's already forgiven you. It begins with God. Amen. You can find peace with God through Jesus Christ, and you can find peace with yourself and accept the fact that I may not be what I used to be. I may not be what I ought to be, but I'm not what I used to be. There had to be a time in my life that I found peace with myself, and I found it in an altar, and I knelt down with tears running down my cheeks as an honest and sincere as I could be, and I, and I cried out to God, and I acknowledged the fact that God... I may not be what I ought to be. I may not have done some things right. And I've made some mistakes and I'm a failure in some areas. But you know what? I acknowledge that you've done something in my life and I'm not what I ought to be, but I'm not what I used to be. 
I'm not what I used to be. And I found peace in my own heart that other people could try to define me as they would. But I have found a new definition for me that I am not who I used to be. Amen. And I got up from that altar living out that new life. Amen? Amen. Not a perfectly living it out and not ever having any more mistakes. But never being brought back to the past of who I used to be. God had changed me. And God had saved me. And I'm, I'm not who I used to be. And then as I began to live out that new life, it began to work itself out in relationships. And I became a better husband, a better father, a better church member, a better pastor, a better uh, employee in different areas. I'm telling you that as I began, I got my heart right with God. And then I got uh, things right in my own heart about myself. Uh, and I acknowledge that God has done a work in me. And I'm living a new life. I'm going a new path. Uh, I, and I want a better life. Then God began to work that out in my relationships. And I began to see that um, I could now be a blessing to others because God had freed me from so many things. Can you see that? It's a wonderful thing to be able to lay your head on your pillow at night and have peace with God because it gives you the opportunity to have peace with yourself. You say, preacher, I've done people wrong and they won't forgive me. You know what? Ultimately, there's only one person that we need to seek that forgiveness from. And that's God. If we've tried, to, we've tried to make things right with people, and they won't hear it. What really matters is that I have peace with God. I have peace with myself because I've done all that God's asked me to do. If God has spoken to you about something and you've done your best, then you do that. You trust that and you believe that, that God has set you free and you live in peace. You may not can reconcile a relationship. You may not can right a wrong. But you can't live under the shadow of that forever. You must go on and say, I've done what God would have me to do. And I'm living in the peace that I am not what I used to be. I may not have been what I should have been, but I'm not what I used to be. You don't help anybody. I had a baseball coach who told me years ago, I, you know, I, 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 he said, if you let a ball roll through your legs and commit an error, he said, you've made a mistake. But if you stand around kicking the dirt while they're rolling the bases and, 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 and you should have been back in your position, you make two errors. He said, you, everybody's going to make one, but you don't have to make that second error. You may have messed up and you may have had some mistakes, but don't stand around kicking the dirt feeling bad about yourself. Lift up your eyes and see that God will forgive you and you can start afresh and anew and you can have, uh, listen, you can still be a blessing to others around you and you can have peace in your heart amen and then you can have peace with others I would to God that we'd all have peace but the question is do you have it do you have peace with, with God in your heart would you like that peace first question is do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior I mean honestly I, I, you know I appreciate the honesty on the testimony of Seth as he said I did what I did for a lot of the right reasons but really for the wrong reasons I wanted to please others but he knew in his heart that it wasn't him it wasn't real I'm not trying to undo your salvation but I want you to know that it's real amen you'll never have peace until it's right with you and God amen, amen. and if it is if you've been saved and there's no art between you and God, listen, and you walk in that peace. But if there's not things right with you and God, I don't expect to correct things in your marriage. I don't expect to see things corrected in your family. I don't expect to see things corrected well in your employment. You start with God and get your heart right with God today. Amen? And then as you get right with God, God will clear up your conscience. And the Bible says He'll take away a guilty conscience and give you a clear conscience about who you are. And He'll straighten you up and put you on the right course. And as you begin to be right with God and right with yourself, you will watch the relationships around you improve. Amen? And you'll be to your children what you need to be. You'll be to your spouse what you need, or need to be. You'll be to your, fam your, your family and neighbors and co-workers what you need to be. And God will use you. It all begins, number one, do you have peace with God? Amen? Because you can have it today. You can have a perfect peace. You can have a, a peace that passes understanding. You can have a peace about that your sins have been forgiven and that you've been justified in the eyes of God.